For decades, China has been working on catching up to the US economically and technologically. Throughout the late 1900s, their efforts paled in comparison to the explosive growth of the US. As they solidified their position as a global supplier, however, their GDP skyrocketed. At this rate, most economists agreed that it's just a matter of time until China's GDP surpasses the GDP of the US. This brings up the question, is GDP the only segment that the Chinese will dominate? Or will the success spill over to the space industry as well? Unlike the USSR and the US, China was a relatively late entrant into space. Though their space agency, the CNSA, was also founded during the Cold War, they were never thought of as a space superpower. It wasn't until the last 20 years that China really started to make significant progress with their rocket technology. But within that short period of time, China's growth has been relentless, and it seems like they might even have a chance to beat NASA to Mars. So, we'll take a look at 5 different categories, just like last week with our NASA vs Russia video, starting with launch technology. Before we jump into launch technology though, I wanted to mention that we won't be including SpaceX in this video, as this is a comparison between NASA and China, not SpaceX in China. The one exception to that role is when we are analyzing NASA's cost efficiency. Though NASA can't take credit for SpaceX's rocket technology, they can take credit for cleverly investing into SpaceX through the commercial crew program. With that being said, let's jump into the launch technology of NASA. In terms of in-house rockets, NASA doesn't really have any. They were initially relying on Russia to send US astronauts to space, and now they're relying on private companies. They have been working on a behemoth rocket though, called the Space Launch System or SLS. This rocket was originally approved in August of 2014 with an expected launch date of September 2018. Clearly, that didn't happen, but NASA is finishing off the final tests and they're planning to conduct the first uncrewed launch in November. So it does seem like SLS will finally take flight within the next 12 months. When it takes flight, it will no doubt be a monster as it's supposed to have a payload capacity of 70 metric tons. NASA also has plans to eventually produce a larger variant with 130 metric tons of payload capacity. As for China, they have a lot of rockets and I honestly have no idea why. China currently has 24 different rockets out of which 7 are retired 15 are active and 2 are in development. The active rockets include the Long March 2C, 2D, 2F, 3A, 3BE, 3C, 4B, 4C, 5, 5B, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, and 11. Considering the amount of rockets they have, it's not surprising to hear that they complete the most number of launches annually in the world. Most of these rockets have a payload capacity of 3 to 7 metric tons. The smallest rocket of the bunch is the Long March 6 which only has a payload capacity of 500 kilograms. On the other end of the spectrum, the largest rocket is the Long March 5B, which has a payload capacity of 25 metric tons. As for the rockets in development, we have the Long March 6A and the Long March 9. We don't have too many details about the 6A, but China has revealed that they're going all out with the Long March 9. This rocket is expected to support a payload capacity of up to 150 metric tons. If successful, the Long March 9 would be the largest rocket ever built. The rocket isn't expected to take flight till 2030, but something to keep in mind is that China is actually pretty good at hitting their deadlines. So it's quite likely that we will see the Long March 9 take flight in the early 2030s. Aside from having a plethora of launch vehicles, China is also heavily focusing on reusability. They're currently trying to land the Long March 8 vertically just like the Falcon 9. China also has a goal of achieving full reusability by 2035. Meanwhile, NASA basically gave up on reusability. They tried to make a reusable rocket with the space shuttle, but that ended up costing way too much to reuse. So they're not even trying to make SLS reusable. Given China's vast fleet of rockets and their ambitions for massive reusable rockets, I think that the launch technology point has to go to China. Moving on to reliability, this is a completely different story. NASA used to be heavily praised for its reliability back in the Apollo days with Saturn V, which boasted a 100% success rate. When it came to the space shuttle though, NASA fell out of the spotlight. NASA built a total of 6 space shuttles, but only 5 of these were ever used for space missions. The last space shuttle, or I guess technically the first space shuttle, was called Enterprise and it was built for atmospheric testing purposes. Out of the 5 that did complete space missions though, 2 of them were lost meaning that 40% of the space shuttles built for actual missions were lost. 
When it comes to reliability, the Russian Soyuz rocket is really the gold standard. Soyuz rockets have completed upwards of 2,000 launches, out of which only one led to a fatality. Compared to that, the space shuttle holds no water. But when we compare the space shuttle to Chinese reliability, the space shuttle is actually quite favorable. Here's the thing. China has a problem with rockets and boosters getting out of control during re-entry. Chinese rocket debris often lands in nearby villages causing significant fear and some damage. Scientists have calculated that given the massive surface area of the Earth, it's unlikely that this debris will cause serious damage. But the principle that the Chinese are just letting their rocket debris land wherever is terrible. This negligence makes it clear that China values forward progress much more than ensuring safety and reliability. And this alone disqualifies them from winning the reliability point. So NASA gets the reliability point, tying up the competition. Next up, let's take a look at either country's upcoming space projects and missions. Since 2000, China has been obliterating NASA in terms of their space ambitions. NASA hasn't really done anything new in quite some time. And this has given China the perfect opportunity to overtake NASA. China has already started to overtake NASA in some aspects. For instance, in 2019, China became the first country to make a soft landing on the dark side of the moon with Chang'e 4. At the end of 2020, China became the first country to bring back lunar samples to the Earth since 1967. In May, China also became the second country to successfully land a rover on Mars. Also, did I mention that China was banned from the ISS due to a lack of transparency and, instead of complying, they decided to just build their own? Clearly, China isn't messing around and they have results to back up their efforts. They're also not just satisfied with mid-tier space achievements. They have their eyes on the most prestigious space achievements, such as sending humans to the moon and Mars. Currently, China's plan is to complete a crewed lunar mission in the 2030s using the upcoming Long March 9. NASA is still looking to return to the moon in 2024, and though I'm not confident that 2024 will pan out, I am confident that NASA will do it by 2030. This means that NASA will return to the moon before China reaches the moon. If we look at Mars, however, NASA's lead isn't nearly as clear. China is looking to go to Mars right after their lunar mission. In fact, they think they can do it as early as 2033. Now, I would say that it's very possible and even likely that SpaceX beats China to the red planet. But will NASA beat China using SLS? I'm not so sure. NASA might use Starship to send their astronauts to Mars before China. But that's not the same thing as NASA reaching Mars using their own rocket. Given how much China has caught up and the fact that they may even beat NASA to Mars, I think that China has the edge when it comes to upcoming space projects and missions. Completing such ambitious space missions is awesome. But what would make it even more impressive is completing them for a reasonable price. And that brings us into our fourth category, which is cost efficiency. China is quite secretive about their launch costs, but they have revealed a couple here and there. The Long March 3B, for instance, costs 50 to 70 million dollars. That's about the same amount that NASA has to pay SpaceX to launch a Falcon 9 rocket. However, the thing to note is that Falcon 9 has over double the payload capacity of Long March 3B. So, NASA's investment into the commercial crew program has given them a much more cost-effective launch option. NASA's also looking to use a lunar starship to send humans to the moon. And I'm pretty confident that Starship will be much more cost-efficient than China's upcoming Long March 9, as SpaceX has much more experience when it comes to rocket reusability. So, NASA gets the point for cost-efficiency. And that leaves us with one last category, which is innovation and longevity. Once again, this should be two different categories. But, like the comparison between NASA and Russia, neither NASA nor China is really that innovative today. NASA has stalled for decades, and China is just copying rocket technology from all around the world. So, I don't think either NASA or China deserve the innovation point, which just leaves us with longevity. Longevity is a pretty complicated answer. As we all know, China is more or less just copying technology from various parts of the world. But, that can actually last quite a long time. Just take a look at the USSR and the US. Both countries were really just copying German rocket technology and were relying on German scientists to push forward their space programs. However, the US ended up winning the space race because they were able to innovate past German technology and reach the moon. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union never really got out of the copying stage. Despite that though, innovation didn't provide an immediate end to the rivalry between the two countries. The Cold War started in 1947 and the US reached the moon in 1969. 
But the Cold War didn't end till 1991, which is 22 years later. So copying can last for quite a while as we've seen in the past. Whether China will stop copying and start innovating is yet to be seen, and we won't find out for decades. It's very possible that China copies Starship for the next 20 years and reaches Mars. But once they reach Mars, they start innovating and become the leaders of the colonization effort. Or maybe copying alone is not enough for them to reach Mars. And as they see SpaceX win the race to Mars, they might slowly stall out like the USSR. I am biased towards American capitalism and entrepreneurship. So I'm going to say that NASA is going to win this category and that they will be the future rulers of space with the help of their private space industry. With that being said, I would not be surprised to see China pick up the slack within the next 20 years and dominate the next space race. Either way though, I'm convinced that the two leading space superpowers moving forward will be America and China. So the race will not be boring by any means. Do you guys think that China could overtake the US? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you're rooting for Team America. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.